Hi. My name is Benjamin J. Allard, and I use the pronoun him and he. And I'm speaking today from Jojage, an unceded Geyengeaga territory, also known as Montreal. Today, I'll present you Cyber Safe and Sound, a project which I had the chance to work on for the past two years. This is a project from the Independent Media Arts Alliance, and it's a resource in cybersecurity specifically designed for arts organization. It's been an amazing two-year adventure, and would like to, we would like to thank the Canada Council for the Arts for its support. And we also worked with the Smart Cybersecurity Network, Seren Risk, from the University of Montréal. Um, and they produce a wonderful 400 pages report on cybersecurity in the arts community. And to translate these 400 pages, we were fortunate to have the media agency Kung Fu as a training partner and the help of Jean-Philippe Descari Mathieu and Geneviève La Jeunesse as cybersecurity consultant. I'm passing now on several other partners and wonderful, wonderful anecdotes, but I want to get now to the presentation of this resource. So if you're watching this today, it's probably because you're already curious about cybersecurity. But what does it really mean? And more importantly, what does it mean for arts organizations? Today, I'm going to draw on our resource, Cyber Safe and Sound, to answer this question and give you an overview of how our micro website can help you answer this question for your organization. Because the policies and the technical means you'll need to put in place will change depending on your needs, we propose a strategy or a series of guides to inspire you. To inspire you. We'll start with our three cybersecurity musketeers. So when we say cybersecurity, we mean protecting data, and that really means three things. First, we want to protect integrity. That is to say, we want information to be intact and unchanged without our consent. For example, that a report is not modified um, before being published, or that no one publishes on our social media networks with, in our name without our knowledge. We don't want that. <laughs> we also mean by protecting data that we, we, we are talking about availability. So that means having access to documents. You're probably familiar with computer attack, attacks, such as ransomware attacks that make documents or systems unavailable. That's something that we don't want. And also, we're talking about confidentiality, which is an attempt to restrict access to certain documents or information, such as sensitive data. It should also be said that this parameter can change over time. For example, a report can be confidential during its production and can become public a few weeks later. So now let's make our three part definition of, uh, let's take our three part definition of digital security. So integrity, availability, and confidentiality, and let's put it in practice. And that's where our guiding principles of ethics and strategy come into place. First, I'd like to talk about cyber citizenship. One of the things um, I'd like to share is the idea that cybersecurity is a team effort. You protect yourself to protect your entire network. As arts organizations, you may feel that you are too small to be target of an attack or that you don't really know, you don't really need to worry about your cybersecurity protection. First, it's not true. Everyone can be a target. And second, it's really selfish to think in that way because you don't forget, uh, because you forget that you probably won't be the only victim of a breach in your safety. So let's look at some numbers. The following are the results from a survey that we conducted at the beginning of the project. You can see that the percentage of IMA members who have been victims of uh, phishing is uh, 13, uh, 
38%. Uh, that is to say, so fishing, it means that an ill-intended person pretended to be an institution, an, a known brand, or trusted person in order to collect personal information about this organization. Here we're talking about more than a third of our respondents who have suffered from this type of attack. Yes, there are very common occurrences such as Prince of Niger type of scam, but there are also some targeted attacks. And I'll share an anecdote with you to illustrate what that might mean. So one of our respondents say that they received one day an email that seemed to come from one of their collaborators with an invoice attached. It's quite a normal looking email. They have a good email address and it's even written the person's style. But after clicking on the attached invoice in question, the computer started emitting strange signs. In short, the computer was infected. Now, do you have an antivirus, a firewall for your network or your website? This, these parameters might change the way this story could unfold for you. But if we go back to the basis, it is an email, an email address that has been compromised. A breach in one of your collaborators' security means that you may be the next victim and you may put your entire network at risk. In short, having, a good, uh, having good cybersecurity practices is not only for you, but is, it is also for being a good citizen in solidarity in the digital space. You protect yourself, you also protect others. The second important facet to understand why we created Cyber Safe and Sound, we need to, in order to understand that, we need to understand risk management. And it comes from an observation. One, you can find a lot of things online to protect yourself as an individual, but there, there are very little information about the protection of an organization, especially for small players like we are in the, in the art world. Second, even if you find information, it's often incomplete and difficult to know exactly what to put in place and how. So that's why we opted to focus on risk management for organizations and try to make a resource that is relevant, whether you have one or 15 employees with or without a person dedicated to, techni to um, digital technology. Right away, however, I have to say that even though we did our best, it's not perfect. If you need advice for a specific situation, you still need to consult a professional. I just hope that with this resource, you may have better questions for this professional and that you may, have, you may share a common knowledge base. So let's take a look now at this resource. You see here a menu. It gives you a very good overview of the different components of Cyber Safe and Sound. First, we start with a manifesto, which is more or less what I summarized for you in the introduction. This is where we find our three cybersecurity musketeers. And then we have the handbook, a quiz, cyber policies, a glossary, documentation, contacts, and the credits. So we'll look at all of that in a bit more details. Let's start with the handbook. That's where you'll be redirected right after the manifesto. It's the basics of cybersecurity, the best practices to have, the fundamental concept that everyone in your organization deserves to know. It takes about two hours to read, and it's written really to be accessible. Whether you're a volunteer or a board member, I think everyone should read it and could learn something about it. So let's take a look at the topics it's got, it, covered. it covers. We explain the concept of sensitive data. We talk about passphrases rather than passwords. We go over the issue of access management, unsecure uh, or public Wi-Fi connections. We present what are suspicious emails. We set the table to work with your personal devices. We make a wink at social networks and privacy settings. We make the difference between backup and archives. And finally, we address the issue of cloud security. You can also take a test to test your knowledge using our quiz. 
So you can do that whenever you want. So here is uh, an image of the quiz interface. I won't go into the details of the handbook in this presentation because I want to talk about the cyber policies. So the cyber policies, there are, there are, um, there are a sequence of actions that goes beyond basic knowledge. And it's really here that we address the famous risk management that, wa that I was talking earlier. We have six policies and it is recommended to do them in order. Even if they might concern different people at different time, there is really a progression between them. So let's start with the security protocol, the, sec the security policy. Here we go. So here there are two phases. First, planning and then reacting to an attack. I can tell you right away that we don't start with the easiest part. We ask you to do a survey and to write an inventory of the data you have. This is important as you need to understand what you have to protect. To do this, we want to help you, so we created tools based on the Google platform. For the, cyber, for the security policy, for example, the first one, we have a template to show you what your inventory could look like. So let's take a look. Here we have a screenshot to give you an idea. You can copy the spreadsheet and adapt it, adapt it to your needs. Uh, we also take you through the process step by step to help you uh, use this tool. So you see here, first, second, and third, uh, and four. This is all you need to do and know in order to master the spreadsheet. Also, at the end of each policy, we have a checklist. And uh, this is just a summary of the important points, what you need to remember. And there are a lot of little things uh, like that in the design to make the resource more user-friendly. I know that these recommendations are not easy to put in place for organizations with limited resources. I know that for a fact, because we actually ask IMA members who had a data management policy in place. Out of 40 respondents, only three person or three organizations had something like this. So I hope that the proposed policies and tools will help the community improve their cybersecurity practices. So let's return to the policy we propose in Cyber Safe and Sound. We discuss in length the first policy. Personally, I think it's the most difficult. And now that you have an idea of the data you have, you need to know how people can access it, who can access it. And that is the second policy, access. We have here for access, passphrase management, role planning and access management, email management, and employee turnover, turn, turnover procedure. We set up general procedures for everyone in the organization, and we also have templates here specifically for access management and employee turnover. And the third policy that we have in place uh, is the BIOD. So now that we know who as access to what, we need to ask how, and often that is where the problem lies. So when you think about it, there are a lot of things at risk in our context. I'm now talking during the pandemic, everyone is using their personal device. So it is necessary to put in place a BIOD policy, which stands for bring your own device. Um, so as I mentioned, with uh, working from home, many people are using their personal equipment and this policy guides you in writing a, pol in a protocol, a policy uh, that works for your need, the needs of your organization. As you can see, the first three policies are quite dense. Um, the access, the security policy and the PIOD policy, it is dense but they are also very important. The fourth policy that we have uh, concern your website. So almost every organization has a website. It is very useful, but it's also a gateway for infections. 
Here, we suggest good practices to implement and explain a little bit the risks and issues associated with web pages. However, for this particular policy, not everyone needs to read and understand this policy. You'll, you'll judge what is relevant according to your situation. The fifth policy um, deals with backup and archiving. Here, it is proposed to elect the person responsible for operating and classifying backups and archive. This is a really an important point again, and um, it's a good practice uh, to have backup and archive. Actually, having good backups and archives, having good practices in this area, allow us to quickly get back on our feet in the event of a cybersecurity problem. Sixth, legal obligation. So that's the final, uh, the final policy we propose. So when you have a cybersecurity breach, do you need to tell someone are there any laws that govern the emails you can send? We see exactly the, these kind of questions in this uh, policy about legal obligations. We provide an overview of the Personal Information Protection and Electronic Document, Documents Act, the General Data Protection Regulation, and Canada's anti-spam legislation. And uh, with this legal policy, this concludes the overview of our policy, but there are still a few features I'd like to present. First, this might look very general, uh, but I like it. It's the search bar, and that allows you to find um, the relevant sections where we're talking about very specific keywords, so you can use it. We also have a glossary, and here you see the glossary entry in French, but the website is bilingual. Um, and the, the glossary, we have in total 36 definitions uh, of cybersecurity terms. So, moreover, when the terms in the glossary are used in the website text, the definition appears in a shadow box. So that's very convenient. And last but not least, the most in interesting feature of all, in my opinion, is not totally on the website. It is because it will be created as we go along and it's called uh, the Frequently Asked Questions. So from November 2020 to February 2021, our expert will use your questions to write uh, the FAQ articles. I have to uh, mention, however, that not Every question will be answered with a tip. Rather, we'll use your questions as inspiration to write our articles. So I will personally read and answer each message, but will not be able to provide personalized answers to uh, everyone. This is the most efficient way to serve the greatest number of people. So I really invite you to let me know what questions that are not yet on our site, but that you'd like to see answered. Finally, the last thing I'd like to mention today um, is an invitation. Uh, we will do the a celebration of the resource uh, in March 2021. We invite you to meet our two uh, lovely cybersecurity experts, Jean-Philippe Descari Mathieu and Geneviève La Jeunesse, to talk about the resource and your digital and talk more generally about digital risk management. So it's in a few months because we want you to consult the resource, put your um, cyber um, put your cyber policies uh, in place and understand your needs as well. From there, I believe that we can establish a very relevant dialogue and I look forward to hearing your stories and tips on cybersecurity. So this is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for watching this video. And uh, please reach out, send us your questions, and consult CyberSafe and Sound. I hope it will be useful.